the March for Life continues to move past this Supreme Court, we now undertake at this spot one of the most historic moves of the pro-life movement in our day, which is to give voice to the countless men and women who have been harmed by abortion. In 1973, on this very day, this court no, no, said hey, me, no. that sometimes pregnancy and childbirth can leave psychological scars on mothers. And therefore they opened the door to a procedure that leaves even more psychological scars and physical damage and spiritual death. And today, and for the next several hours, you will again see and hear the evidence of that. Because you will hear the voices, you will see the faces of men who have lost children to abortion, of mothers who have had their children killed within their womb, but you will also see something far more important. You will see the faces, you will hear the voices of those who have come to know that there is a Savior. That there is a Redeemer in the midst of this culture of death. You will hear the voices, you will see the faces of men and women who have come to know, perhaps better than any of the rest of us, that in the midst of the dark valley, in the midst of the deep darkness of the culture of abortion, there is a light that the darkness cannot overcome. And that light is a person and that light has a name and his name is Jesus Christ. There is nothing that the abortion industry or the abortion promoters or the members of Congress or the President can do, nothing that they can do to stop the voices of the Silent No More awareness campaign and of Operation Outcry, those men and women standing together, together here today to share their testimonies. And brothers and sisters, we're going to pray a blessing on them now as they begin. But as we pray this blessing, let's make a commitment that all of us, in our individual conversations and in the work we do for this movement, will give echo to the testimonies we hear today. We will bring them out into the public, into the limelight. These women and men have taken such a step of courage to share these testimonies. Let's meet their courage with our courage to bring those testimonies to more and more men and women across America. And so we pray, Lord God, send your blessing upon these, these witnesses to your love, these witnesses to your mercy, living testimonies to your gospel, which is the gospel of life, which is the gospel of mercy, which is the gospel of hope. Hope that this world and this society may yet be converted to life. Give us hearts now that will listen to their voices. Let us know their pain. Let us rejoice in their peace. And Lord, as so many people applauded and cheered as these men and women passed by. Give us the understanding now that that applause and that cheer means that what has happened to these men and women, that the healing and the new light that they have experienced is a foreshadowing of what will happen to our entire culture, our entire nation. Because Lord, we stand before you today in prophetic, victory. We stand before you and before this court and we say with scripture that Roe v. Wade, which is a covenant of death, we say with the word of God, your covenant of death will be annulled and will stand no more. We ask all this in the mighty name of the only Lord, the only Savior, the only hope of the world, and the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords, and the Lord of the White House, and the King of the Congress, and the Judge.
judge of this court, Jesus Christ our Lord.